Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to our Christmas in July service here at Our Saviors. It's wonderful to have you with us both here in person and online. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to celebrate Our Savior's birth with you today, especially since back in December we were still online only. So we are so excited to be in person and be able to celebrate um, Christmas today. Prayer concerns uh, today. There are paper copies out front. If you haven't grabbed one, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, those are available for you to take home with you, so you can also pray for the people listed there um, throughout the week. This morning, our prayer concerns, we lift up Tom and Louise Clipsville, Cheryl Batten, and Heidi Johnson. We also wanted to note that we're scheduled for resurfacing and repair of our parking lot this week. Um, our parking lot, so uh, parking, the parking lots will be closed this week. If you do plan on uh, coming to the church, please uh, note that and uh, prepare accordingly if you have any business to do here this week. Out at the welcome desk, there are also some extra Sunday school bags that have been prepared if you would like to take one. These are the bags that Jesse and I deliver to our Sunday school families. Uh, it has some information about VBS in there. Um, as well as a flat Goliath. So feel free to take those with you. Um, if you don't want the whole bag, I also made up some flat Goliaths out there just so, for you to have. Um, if you do take one though, please be sure to use the hashtag OFLC flat Goliath if you do take him out into the community or elsewhere and take a picture with him. We want to make sure that we're tracking where he has been um, on his adventures with you this summer. So please note that. I also wanted to thank you all for your donations for the cool campaign. We uh, so appreciate your generosity. We, you have helped us, helped us raise about $38,000 so far. So thank you. Um, keep the donations coming to keep us cool. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Holy Communion with the prepackaged uh, communion cups so, uh, from your pew. So please note that. Um, we look forward to celebrating communion with you all. And with that, I believe that is all we have. Oh, thank you. I will um, announce that as well. Uh, quilting is canceled tomorrow because of the parking lot resurfacing. Thank you for that. I just wanted to make that uh, known to you all. So um, quilting canceled because of the parking lot resurfacing. And with that, uh, we continue with our opening hymn, number 270, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
the grace of Christ Jesus, the love of God, and the, whole, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join together in hymn number 277. One of the New Testament lessons that we can read for the Christmas season is from Titus chapter 3. We don't normally read it, but we do it here for Christmas in July. To speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit, God poured out on us richly through Christ Jesus, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is sure. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. From Luke 2, once again, we hear a portion of the birth story of our Savior. <clears throat> While Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You'll find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, grace and peace to you from God and the Lord Jesus. Amen. It is Merry Christmas in July, and there is a reason for that. You can look it up online, of course, but we'll go through a very brief history this morning to remind all of us that in the early years of Christianity, Easter was the holiday. There was no Christmas. The birth of Jesus wasn't celebrated. It took centuries for church officials to institute the birth of Jesus as a holiday. In fact, it wasn't until the 200s AD that December 25th was even mentioned. And other dates were set in various times of the calendar. It was first called the Feast of the Nativity, and the custom spread to Egypt by the 400s and to England by the end of the 6th century. Now you may be thinking, but why celebrate it on a different day? I mean, July 25th. Well, to this very day in Christendom, Eastern Orthodox churches celebrate Christmas on December 25th, but it's not our December 25th. You see, they are traditionalists, and they have continued with the Julian calendar when they observe Christmas Day. That corresponds to January 7th on the calendar that we use in the West, known as the Gregorian calendar. So that means that hundreds of millions of Christians still celebrate Christmas on a different day. And just this morning, I was reminded by a couple of our church members, Holden Village always celebrates Christmas in July. Why Christmas in July? Why Christmas any time? The Bible does not mention a date for the birth of our Lord Jesus. And that was a fact that our Puritans who came over into this country from England pointed out as they denied the celebration of Christmas. You know how we talk about the pilgrims coming and landing here, the immigrants from Europe? Well, those English separatists who came to America in 1620 were such traditionalists that Christmas was not a holiday here in America. And from 1659 to 1681, the celebration of Christmas was actually outlawed in Boston. Anyone exhibiting the Christmas spirit was fined five shillings. 
Now, how about that for good Christian Christmas spirit? But it wasn't just them. You see, because of some of the English customs that began to surface in <clears throat> the mother country, after the American Revolution, since those English customs began to fall out of favor, given our War of Independence, one of those customs of the great feasting and celebration was Christmas. That's right. Christmas went out of fashion. And it wasn't even declared a federal holiday until June 26th of 1870. You can find all these kinds of things online. You know, the History Channel, the Encyclopedia Britannica, I mean, you name it. But think about what Christmas actually means. We talk about it each year. It is the Christ Mass. It is to celebrate Christ. But even those who founded the church, you know, the so-called patriarchs of the church, they were in strong opposition to ever recognizing the Christ Mass. That is to celebrate Jesus' birth. And their reasons were actually good for that day and age. It was a pagan custom to celebrate a birthday. And they wanted to make sure that the body of Christ was not falling in with all these kinds of pagan celebrations. They believed, and we still do it to this day, that we should celebrate saints and martyrs for their martyrdom. And those should be the days that we remember. Their quote, body of Christ or Christian days. We still do that. And they ascribe that to the birth of Jesus as well. But finally, after the centuries, it was decided December 25th for Christmas. You would think that with that, we would finally have set a date that didn't stray from the true meaning of Christmas. But fear not, it did not take long for even Christians to stray, if you will, from Christmas. And so Christmas began to be observed by Christians and non-Christians alike. And especially in the 20th century, many of the things that we take for granted, you know, the decorations and the different traditions that we talk about, are rather modern. I mean, Christmas cards weren't even exchanged until the 19th century. And of course, in the last couple of centuries, the idea of gift giving began to build and build and it became more extravagant. So Christmas in July is not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea because <clears throat> if you look around, there isn't a whole lot of Christmas out there right now. Hopefully you haven't been invited to any Christmas parties where you had to bring something. You're not going to go home today and make Christmas dinner. I guess if you do, good for you. But at least there's no pressure. I mean, have any of you been baking Christmas cookies for weeks? Have you been stringing up lights, doing all those other things? Have you been going online or into the local stores and getting Christmas presents? Of course not. So why Christmas in July? <clears throat> seven months hence Christmas in July or Christmas in June or Christmas in August but having that time away from all the Christmas rush gives us a time a time to focus not on the tinsel and the trappings but to focus on the reason for the season Jesus Jesus, this is the reason that we even have Christmas. Jesus is the gift. And Jesus is a reason to celebrate not just for the 12 days of Christmas, for our shortest church season, but it gives us reason to celebrate. Now, there are some other reasons that we're celebrating lately. This past weekend, the Olympics, even during a pandemic, have gone on. And there are still great concerns. 
But with this celebration, there have come some great things with this timing of the Summer Olympics, especially the stories of athletes overcoming adversity and their perseverance. You see, as great as all those medals are, and as wonderful and as joyful it makes us to join in that competition and that spirit, and as much as we covet achievements, Christmas shows us that there is more to life than all of that. You know, there is more to life than our work, more to life than our personal accomplishments, more to life than presence and our possessions. Christmas is the story of the birth of a savior, a savior for the world. That is the Christmas present. That is the gift that keeps on giving. And that gift of Christ brings us the gift of peace and goodwill. Christmas tells us it's not the things that we acquire in life. It's not about where we live or the kind of home we have. It's not about what we drive or what kind of accomplishments that we feel makes us great. The good we show one another, goodwill to all, that's what makes us great. That's what makes you and me and all those who follow the Christmas spirit great. You can dress up all you want, but if you don't have that true Christmas spirit every day, then it gets us back to Titus. Because peace and goodwill to all is obviously in contrast to how we often speak and act towards one another. Titus reminds us of our quarrelsome nature. Titus reminds us how we can be foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, and yes, passing our days in malice, even reminding us how too often in this world, not just nations, but people end up hating one another. And then Titus brings us back to the Gospel of Luke, the Christmas story, by saying those words again. But when the goodness and the loving kindness, the goodness and the loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, God saved us. Jesus saved us according to to his mercy. God pours it out upon us richly, Titus says. Through whom? Through Christ Jesus, our Savior. When he says the saying is sure, that saying is sure. That is the message of Christmas. Because that's the message that each year leads us back to Easter. So I was trying to figure out, what should we do for Christmas in July? Well, we encourage those <clears throat> who are able to <clears throat> hear about it to go ahead and dress in your Christmas garb, but not to wear your Christmas sweaters. I mean, after all, it's still July. And last time I checked outside, it's going to be another warm day. It's festive. It's fun. I know Carr put up some nice Christmas decorations out there. We have some fun red Christmas treat to eat from our fellowship team. And those are all good and fun. But that's not even what Christmas is all about. I mean, those are the fun parts. But this is the true nature of Christmas, is to be good to one another. Not just on Christmas Day, but every day. And I thought about, well, what kind of Christmas present could we share 
that would be in that same kind of feeling. And so I came up with something small and simple that I want to share with those who are here with us. After the worship service, Carr and I will have some of these to hand out. Now, it's a milk chocolate bar. You're saying, well, what does that have to do with Christmas? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> now, if you go to Aldi's right now, you, you won't find it. But when it gets back around the season, they're one of the few stores that I have found that actually sells fairly traded Christmas chocolates. And how is that Christmas? Well, it's different from any other chocolate you will buy. Because the other chocolates that we purchase that aren't part of that fairly traded family umbrella are almost always harvested by slave labor or indentured servitude, by children and women. The spirit of Christmas is to give a present that doesn't perpetuate what existed in Jesus' time, that kind of slavery, that indentured servitude. So I thought, you know, it's not the big Christmas presents that really matter, but it's the little things in life, the little things that we can enjoy about Christmas that is literally helping farmers around the globe, but also ensuring there's one less child, one less woman in slavery just to get us chocolate. A treat, not a necessity. You see, that brings us back to Christmas. All these other things are treats, but the necessity of Christmas is the gift that we share and it is simple. The meaning of Christmas. It is the one Christmas gift that we can unwrap every day of the year and share not only with our family and our friends, but with all people. The gift that was promised through Christ Jesus, our Messiah, Savior, and Lord. Peace and goodwill. May you share the Christmas gift every day. Merry Christmas to all. Amen.
rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our worshiping congregate of our neighboring congregations, especially our Aniwak worshiping community and St. Olaf and Grace Lutheran Church, our other EOCEA community congregations. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, God. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Provide relief for areas that are flooding. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, God. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, God. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, especially Tom and Louise, Cheryl and Heidi. Hear us, God. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, God. Thank you for the birth of Jesus, the gift of Christmas. Assist us in our discipleship ministry to bring the Christmas message of peace on earth and goodwill to all people all year long. Hear us, God. We give thanks for those who have died. As you sustained them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with the Apostle James, all the saints, the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, Hear us, God. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Jesus, the Christ of Christmas, be with you always. We share this peace by making a sign of peace to one another. Join in hymn number 288.
We pray. Most high and holy God, pour out upon us your one and unifying spirit and awaken in every confession of the whole church a holy hunger and thirst for unity in you through Christ Jesus, our Messiah, Savior, and Lord. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer this day. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And hopefully, with the blessing today, we're mindful of, even if you didn't feel like Christmas in July was such a great thing, hopefully you at least enjoyed our Christmas songs. We don't often get to sing them, so I want to thank Brian as well <coughs> as Rod today. Beautiful music. Thank you so much for us to enjoy that Christmas song spirit. Now receive God's benediction blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, <clears throat> nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. I invite those able to please rise as we sing number 290, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go in peace. The Christ of Christmas is with you.